Alright, so so far I have to admit that the display grid hasn't been very helpful. It's just going to create new rows for each item. So let's now go ahead in this lecture and actually define a real grid where we can say how many rows and columns we actually want to have. So first of all, there's a property called grid template rows. So I'm just going to type GTR here and it's going to come up with that. And then you can define each of the rows and how high in this case it should be. So for a row, it's going to be the height. So I can say the first row, for example, should have 100 pixels height and the second one should be 200 pixels. So depending on how many values you put in here, the amount of rows is going to adjust to that. So with this, you would only create one row with 100 pixels in size. This way, I'm going to create two rows and I could also create three rows if I wanted to. But let's stick with two rows for this example. And then, of course, there's also grid template columns, which works the exact same way. So you can now define the size of each column. So let's say I want to have 200 pixels. Then I'm going to say auto. And then I'm going to say 150 pixels. So now I'm going to have two rows and three columns, which you can see here on the right. So each column here is going to be of a different size in this case. The first here is actually going to be 200 pixels wide. And I haven't said anything about the height. It's just going to stretch to fit the row because the row is actually going to be, in this case, 100 pixels in height. So item one here, or the cell that item one is in, is then of course going to be 200 pixels wide by 100 pixels high. So this is how you can know what what size each of the grid cells is going to have. And then if you use auto for a column size, then the appropriate column will actually span the whole width that's still remaining in the grid container. So that's a very simple way to take up remaining space in a row by just using one column that's going to be set to auto and therefore it's going to take up all the space that's left in the width of the grid container. Now another thing to notice is that um, we have our items numbered from one to six. So the way the grid is going to lay out or arrange the items is it's going to fill the row here. So one, two, three, then it's going to go into the next row and start filling in the items there. We're going to see how to change that behavior, but I think it's the intuitive way and the thing would have expected if you don't actually change the default behavior. And just to quickly take a look, I'm going to go back down here again and click on this tool here. And you can see that now we have rows and columns, which is probably hard to see in the video. And also because we don't have any gutters between the elements yet. But this is going to become more visible later on when we have also better grid layouts with gaps or gutters between the elements. But for now, I want to talk about um, a shorthand in CSS. So as you know, Normally there's always a shorthand for stuff like this that allows you to set both properties. And that in this case is called just grid template where you can first define the rows and then the columns. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this with this exact example from above. So first you can define the rows like this and I'm actually going to get rid of these two lines so that you can see that the grid layout is now coming from the grid template here. And then what you're going to have to do is add a slash character and then define the columns. Now you don't need to go into a new line here. I'm just doing that for readability reasons so that the lines don't become too long. But this is also quite new in CSS. So that's one of the things that I meant when I said there are many new paradigms here. And one is the slash character to, that, that we're going to see more often also in other properties which is here used to separate the row definitions from the column definitions. And it's a bit unfortunate that this looks a bit like a division, but you're going to get used to this very fast if you use um, CSS grids. So now this way I can go ahead and save this again. And then the grid is still going to look the exact same way. And I'm actually going to get rid of the highlighting here again. And just to show you that it's really coming from this definition here, I'm going to make two or both rows the same height. And you can see that um, it changed. So the grid template here is the shorthand to define first 
the rows and then the columns in your grid. Okay, great. So now we know how to actually create a real grid with a number of rows and a number of columns. But now the question is, what if I want to say that item 2 should actually be in a different cell of the grid, or maybe item 4 should be in a different cell, and I don't want to actually just follow this default behavior that the grid is just filled from top left to right and top to bottom. And that's exactly what you're going to do, of course, in the next lecture.